let me see. So I think one of the things that um, that it was really important that you mentioned was the fact that um, a lot of your groundwork um, was part of the group. How long were you in the group before you how, before you got the deal? Because that seems as if it was a lot of training and concerts and performing. So how long before you joined the group that you got the deal? Okay, it was a good solid three and a half years. Okay, I think yeah, because we we really we went hard. Like, I mean, I understand that uh, you know they had this thing of wanting to kill everybody with the harmony, but we also had to kill people with the vocals and the. I, you know, I was more so the soulful one. I'm the, I'm the, I mean, if you listen to most of our stuff, I'm the, the take home, take it home guy. Okay. So, yeah. And I, I was the one that, that, that was like responsible for a lot of the power vocals before um, we got the deal. And then when we got the deal, you know, we got a new member and then it was a balance thing. You know, Kenny Babyface, he decided, okay, well, I'm going to do the same format I did with a After Seven. So you got the high tenor, and then you got the, you know, the second uh, right up under him. And so me, I'm that th the second one, but I'm coming from the bottom all the way up. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to the, <laughs> you listen to that first album, I'm hit the highest note on the album. Wow. <laughs> But, but that's just because you know I was able to do that. I I trained myself to, uh, to to do that. But I think we didn't. I didn't actually get vocal training until like halfway through the album. You know, as part. You know, like when we were literally out there doing it professionally. But then thinking about that, then uh, because you've described an amazing chemistry. The five of you, the five of you before the, the deal, mm -hmm. and then you know things change, and, and for some reason, and uh, things change. Then you get the deal, and then you you, you now you got Babyface who's doing the whole album, and he has a vision. You know, you mentioned after seven, so he's thinking, okay, this is what I did with my brothers, and and they were right. successful. Mm -hmm. If in hindsight, if you guys were signed, and maybe where in Atlanta, where L.A. Reid would have said, if you guys could take control of your stuff, we'll give you some producers, but you guys produce your album. Do you think we would have gotten a different, we would have seen a different after seven, sorry, after seven, as yet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, after seven, yeah. Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, probably. And not because um, uh, Kenny's influence uh, still wouldn't have been there, it's just because, yeah, that was inevitable that we were going to do a song with Kenny. And it was inevitable that that was going to be the song that actually got us, you know, platinum uh, records and stuff. But yeah. it's, it's, it's the cool thing is he knew we were self-contained. Mm. So it, it, it wasn't a thing that we we came to the table with uh, over 13 songs. We sang, <laughs> we sang his mother-in-law, Lord Rest Her Soul. Yeah, we I, sang I, her to death. I, no, we didn't sing her to death, no. Yeah. <laughs> but we... <laughs> We sang her all the way through the, the dinner. We sang through dinner and we sang and we, we didn't let her go until we got Kenny on the phone so that he could confirm that he loves us. Because he had already heard that, you know, the tape with our demos. Yeah. And, you know, that's when he was like, well, you guys sound half as good as this tape, then you got a deal. So, we wasn't going to let that go no matter what, <laughs> you yeah. know? But at the same time, you know, we knew we had already dealt with enough manage managers uh, in, our, in our amateur day. We already knew what we had, what we were dealing with. Yeah. You know? So we just dealt with it. And in and, and dealing with it, it's still, we managed to, to get seen by the world. Yeah. And we managed to, to manipulate time enough yeah. To, to you know, do what we were doing, and so, yeah. So I I interviewed um. So I've got three people that I remember interviewing: Donnell Jones, who was signed to LaFace, but he was signed with his on Untouchables. Cassandra uh -huh. Lucas, part of Changing Faces, they were part of um. I think Big Boy, but 
but they're mm-hmm. part of the Untouchables camp, but signed to um, Atlantic. And then Buddy from Intro, you know, they were part of Untouchables signed. And wow. because they were part of a production, they were able to do their own music, you know, with the in-house producers, produce their own sound. And then mm-hmm. that was taken to the label. So we got them as opposed to um, a modified version of what they, their talents were. And, and mm-hmm. I do wonder if you guys were probably signed to a production deal which had, which allowed you guys to express yourself, would we have seen a difference, a different, and that's why I said if you had signed directly with L, uh, uh, LaFace, we, we would have seen something different instead of uh, um, the direction you went. Yeah. I mean, yeah. no, long story short, we wouldn't have been, uh, we would not have been considered step, step children. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what I call it because, you know, it's like we were, we were on one side and another whole division that wasn't totally developed yet. Yeah. So, so it, it, we were looked at, I mean, come on, Atlanta, we were from Philly. Yeah. We were, we were, t- we were treated like we were some bougie people from, <laughs> we were, we know, we, we, no. All we had to do was just go down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because, as I said, when we look at as yet as a, as a music fan, I, I, did, I never associated you guys with, um, with LaFace. And back in that time, artists were very much associated with the label. So if you think of Total, 112, you all knew it was yeah. part of Bad Boy. If you, right. All the groups were, were known for their labels, so so Def. So the labels were, you know, Def Row, Murder, Inc. So we knew the labels and their roster. And we knew the face and their roster. Mm-hmm. But for somehow, at that point, we didn't really know much about you guys. But after, after the first album, after going through, through that, how did you decide to continue to stay within the group and not branch out? Because especially after one or two members who won the first album moved on, how did you decide to not move on as well and to continue? Because the core of the group was still there. The two members that, that, that were looked at as moved on, no, they didn't move on. They got moved on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to be clear, because I mean, you know, but that's a lot of it is because it was selfishness, you know? Well, you know, I'm going to take the likeness of the group and I'm going to run and do my own thing. But, you know, we already know one member was doing, doing that anyway, had already did that before we even got with us. And then he expected history to repeat itself with a different result. No, you get the book just like you did the first time. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, one of the, um, you know, I've done many interviews and, 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 you know, and, and you build relationships with, with, with some of your previous guests. And so Sean is somebody that I've built a good relationship with and, and stuff. And, you know, he was very sincere in, 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 in his, his stuff. Um, did you form relationships, not just like this is a group and I'm going to move on, or did you, you know, did you guys really form friendships with the ones, the core that you could talk about? Yeah, yeah. But the unfortunate part about some of these relationships is if, if, if you, from a business standpoint, is going to be that disrespectful and selfish and try to do some conniving, sneaky stuff, that's usually your character. That's basically the base of your character. So if that's the type of person that that you chose to be and, and can't see yourself not being, then no, that's not a friend that, that I want to hang out with. You know, no, but I, I can truly say I've been friends with everybody, but I can't say I'm friends with everybody now because it, it's too many faces. I don't even remember them all. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, and, 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 <laughs> And you, you know, yeah, we, 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 I think the temptations led the ground where, where, where you know, they kept revolving um, members and things like that. But mm-hmm. so you've gone through. Um, now, the last time I did see you, um, people would know that uh, it was, you know, you, you guys were put. You were, you were part of as yet. You were, and you, were, you were about to, um, you know, those four of you now at that time. Um, mm-hmm. You, 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 you had. Um, you know, you guys were looking at releasing some singles and then uh, an, an album and stuff. 
in the short, in this three, four months since then, what, what changed? Because people would wonder, okay, we just saw Kenny as part of it as yet, and he had his interview, and they were about to release a um, kleptomania, mm -hmm. and um, nothing has changed. I just added to the added to the list of things to do. Okay. <laughs> so you know, as yet, still as yet, I'm okay. still with as yet. I'm never not going to be with as yet. Okay. Because I was there to help lay the foundation, so that's going to always be. But um, it's just now is just the right time for me to do more. Okay. I know more, so I can do more. Yeah. So, so I, I think I'm at the point now where I just need to give myself more credit on what I know okay. as opposed to um, what I see happening. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that's, that's basically all it is for me. And like I said, I, I speak of my mom a lot because, you know, uh, some of her last words to me was, you know, you don't have to just do the good thing. You could do, you could do your own thing too, right? You know, that was just something that made me think, you know, like, what? And, you know, and it's so sad for me because, like, she's not here now. So she's not here to see that. Yeah. But, the, however, she was here to see me with as yet one last time. So I'll, I'll forever have that in my heart and in my memory. But, yeah. you know, it, for my mother, remember, I told you, my mother wasn't too, too supportive in that way. Or at least I didn't feel she was. But, but behind behind my back, of course, she loved everything I did. Yeah. But she wasn't the type of person to articulate that to me. Yeah. So for her to say this to me, it it really meant a lot. So yeah. I was like, and that wasn't so long ago. You know what I mean? My, my mom just passed like less than three years ago. Oh, okay. okay. So, you know, so it, it, that is still strong. On me, yeah. you know, knowing that she wouldn't have said that just to say it. She said it because I needed to hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's issues that, that you have as you get older, blood pressure issues and stuff like that. Mm. My mom said to me one day, you know, you need to check your blood pressure, you know. And I went to check my blood pressure and realized, wow, this ain't normal. <laughs> you wow. know what I'm saying? So certain things that your mama tell you you, you yeah. listen and you and you take it in or else you might end up assed out <laughs> yeah yeah thanks for watching please remember to subscribe to the channel but most importantly to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview loads to come but thanks a lot for watching